Lincoln and not are. But the guy is out of his mind. <laughs> I don't think no, he no, does. No, no, no. Do you know who Weekend Blake and Anod is? No, that's the whole point. There's a children's story. Weekend Blake and Anod. Anyway. <laughs> <never mind. laughs> That's awesome. Jim knew, what, Jim knew what I was saying. I knew what that, you were that, saying, and I was, but, yeah, yeah. and I loved the fact that IQ just was like, "I've got to get the story out. I don't care about any of this," and he just kept talking. It was great. <laughs> the, yeah, Taliban, to... the Taliban are going to finish before the end of the year. They will take over the whole of Afghanistan. There is absolutely no doubt about this point. Yes, and the tragedy is the worst that will will be the women of Afghanistan, not the women, the women. They will be subjugated for the next 1,400 years if Islam survives me. So is there anybody in the, in the Middle East who's going to stop them? No, that's the whole point. All of them will support them. The Uyghurs of uh, China are going to start training in Afghanistan to start a war of terror against China. They would be like the Qaeda, Al Qaeda. You see? So there's no, Sorry. There's, no, there's nobody there. Just, there's nobody there. The Saudis and the Qatars and all those, none of them are going to get involved. They're just going to let it happen. They would not be allowed to be involved because, according to the uh, Afghanis, the Saudis are pro American. This True. Is why. Yes, this is why Osama bin Laden went against the Saudi family, the royal family. He went against his own people. Well, not his own people, his own family. Because okay. he accused them of allowing uh, infidels to be on the soil of uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. Although those infidels were saving Saudi Arabia from extermination by Saddam Hussein. You see, we're not discussing logic when it comes to Islam. There is no rational thinking in Islam. And the Americans and the Europeans, being stupid, with all due respect, they are stupid, they keep defending the Uyghurs against China. You don't do that. I remember something very important. During the Vietnam War, Cam Cambodia was slaughtered. The Cambodian people were slaughtered by the Khmer Rouge. Vietnam went into Cambodia against the Khmer Rouge. America condemned them. I remember that until, I mean, we talk about 1970s. The hypocrisy of it. The Vietnamese were saving a people from being exterminated, but the American government decided to condemn them for it. The same thing in China. The Uyghurs are Muslim. They are terrorist organization against China. There's no question about it. So IQ, and now they will have places to train in Afghanistan, Pakistan. They let had me... Osama bin Laden only a mile and a half from their West Point for five years. And they pretended they didn't know. Come on, for God's sake. So let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Yeah. See if I can get this right. Um, is it possible that China would be the third leg of the three-legged stool. And let me explain that. That may be a phrase that you're not familiar with. It's an American expression. The Russians tried to take over Afghanistan, failed. The United States tried to take over Afghanistan, failed. The Chinese are coming in to try and take over ex ex Afghanistan. Will they also fail? They will not fail because they're not going to try to bring democracy. This is the beauty of the thinking of the Chinese Communist Party. They're not, there, they're not interested in changing the format of the dictatorship. They will use Afghanistan to subvert America and the West. And they will succeed. Because they will offer them uh, transportation, infrastructure. They're not interested in democracy. They have no democracy. They are a dictatorship. Afghanistan is a dictatorship. Under the Taliban, it will be the worst type of dictatorship. China will not fail, no. Even though they are literally, I don't call it genocide, because genocide is an extermination. 
although they are subjugating the Uyghurs in their own country. So they will still succeed. The thing that concerns me is not, is, um, it, what concerns me is that I believe that the Chinese imperialism that they're trying to institute all over the world will in fact be their downfall because they don't have enough money to support a global imperialism. Not and today. It, I agree with you. But they are doing it slowly. They are very methodical. Believe me, they are very methodical. I'm not defending them for God's sake. Don't, don't misunderstand me. They Every scare the shit out of me. <laughs> they are methodical. They, are, they bought lands all over Europe. They bought lands in Africa. They bought lands in Latin America. They, they literally bought land to cultivate for their own people. And not only the land is not only for cultivation. This is imperialism in the literal word. But they, they didn't go to war. They did not send troops and spend money to defend X, Y, and Z. They're not doing that. America has troops in 140 countries. 140 countries cost you $40 billion a year. And I'm only including, by the way, in my estimates, based on what you have in America, only the land forces. We're not discussing how many trillions of dollars are spent in aircraft carriers to secure the rights of navigation in the Pacific Ocean. Well, I'm not, you know, I'm not even thinking about this. I'm not putting it into the calculation. We're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars spent by American taxpayers just to keep American forces outside the United States of America. Right. And, and, and I, I'm not trying to be flippant with you. $40 billion used to be a lot of money, IQ. But when you're talking about a budget of three and a half trillion dollars, forty yeah, billion. But most of it will be stolen, for God's sake. Yeah. Where will, the, where, who's going to, who is going to use the three and a half trillion? You know yeah. that, and I know that it will be stolen. It will be wasted. Wasted. Yeah. The okay. military-industrial complex is the one who is going to take most of it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. I disagree with that. So, mm -hmm. are, are we having a second half guest, Jim, or are we still? No, I think we're just going to go straight through here. So, uh, what what is what what is a uh, a topic that you want to you want to suggest? Uh, IQ, good one for you. This is a real conspiracy. Okay, go go. What, what does or what do Fauci, Redford, um, Redford. Uh, Red, Redmond, excuse me. Redmond. Oh, okay. I was thinking you were going to bring up Robert Robert Redford. I'm like, what's he got to do with Fauci? So, uh, Redmond, um, Burke, Fauci, what do they have in common? I have not a clue. They all were leading researchers on HIV. Oh, wow. Now. Here's something I bet you didn't know. What's the basic component of the COVID-19 vaccine? HIV, I believe. An HIV strain. Wow. And they all knew about it. And they were standing there in front of us all the time. They were with Donald Trump. Never said a word. And so we're, we're spending an inordinate amount of time and money on what is called the third wave. The third wave is the Delta strain. But there's another wave coming called the fifth wave, which will be more deadly and more debilitating than anything before it. And they already know about it, but they're not telling us. Wow. 
See, it goes back to where we started this conversation. We're being lied to, as IQ said, we're being lied to, to uh, by what's going on in the government. Uh, I said they're lying to us to distract us away from the real hard issues of our country. Um, yeah. Because they they don't have any solutions. And now we're... T- I mean, look at the stupid games they're playing, Jim. <laughs> the... the, 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 the <laughs> Pelosi's out there gloating because she thinks she's got one over on the Republicans because the Republicans have agreed to the compromise infrastructure bill of $1.2 trillion, which represents a $560 billion increase to what was already budgeted. Okay. But, but they're going to get that done, and then they're going to bring in the $3.8 trillion budget under the rec- rec- reconciliation provision, which only requires a simple majority, not 60 votes in the Senate. So the the Democrats are the Democrats are playing games. The Democrats have been drafting the bill, the the infrastructure bill, since they took office in in uh, January. The bill, Jim, the bill is 2,800 pages long and the most common used language in the document do you know what it is what is that at the discretion of the secretary so they're not they're not putting pieces in the bill that says we're going to spend 300 billion dollars on highways bridges and tunnels and airports and waterways yeah They're going to spend $300 billion at the discretion of the Secretary of Transportation. So we got 2,800 pages that basically say squat, and they're giving the discretion to the secretaries to figure out how to spend it. I mean, it's absurd. 2,800 pages of legislation, and they're going to try and vote on it by Thursday, and it came out Sunday. Now, do you really think that congressmen and senators have enough time to write to read 2800 pages before the vote no 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 No, they don't so what are they saying the leadership in the democratic party says just trust us we're going to do the right thing bull crap (laughs) and the democrats the democrats say to the republicans well you should vote for this because it's the the stimulus package is or the the infrastructure package is bipartisan support. It's 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 smoke and mirrors, and we don't seem to have people enough House and Senate to say this is crazy. We can't keep. We're, it's it's a definition of insanity. Keep doing the same thing over again and expecting a different outcome. Not going to happen. And so I, I I look at this this appropriation. I'm saying. $3.8 trillion. Insane. Insane. And IQ's got a uh, military station in 140 countries around the world. IQ, let me ask you a question. If, if President Trump was back tomorrow and he said, sometime within the next 90 days, we're pulling them all back. All of the people, that, all of our military are coming back home. What would happen? He would be overthrown by the military industrial complex. You mean like he already was? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not kidding with you. I understand. People, yeah, I think laugh, we... people laugh at this. Eisenhower was right, and he was a military man. He yep. was right, and I'm talking about the 1950s. Yep. So... I, you know, I, I, I look at it and I say, wow. It's yeah. scary. The whole thing is scary. Honestly, everything we have been discussing for the last four and a half years to five years is scary. America is not the same as it was in the 1980s. Right. You're not even, you changed completely the day Obama moved in. The day you mo- he moved in, 
it was the beginning of the end of America. And, and speaking said, of, I will transform you. Speaking of our esteemed president, former president, he's throwing himself a birthday party on, uh, on and I think, in Martha's Vineyard at his $14 million estate, and he's only having it, only inviting 500 guests. 700. I have to correct you. I'm reading the, the right information. 700, they said. Okay. But you're right. He gets exemptions from the group and the masking and all that crap he, because he's the president. He's he's part of the elite. He is an elite, for God's sake. Mm -hmm. Of course, he is. He, he was an elite. He's still an elite. And still, he thinks America is racist. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, talking about utter stupidity, today when I was in the American embassy, there were people of every single bloody nationality waiting in line to come legally to America. Yeah. And if America is so racist, why would those idiots, including myself, come? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Why are you coming here? Because I want to change it. Oh. Yeah. Good good I want to make America great again. <laughs> That's not arrogant. Well. <laughs> this is patriotism. Although I'm not a citizen. Well, you could probably make it great again, even if you weren't a citizen, if you just had a green card. Well, I haven't got the green card yet, as I said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they need a vaccination. <laughs> speaking of green cards, let's talk about green cards. Yeah. I can't tell you the city. Okay, but I can tell you that it's in Florida. I heard this story, and I asked to, to get it verified, and I got it verified. So you got, you got somebody in the country who's an illegal, and um, you got kids, so they go to one of these social service centers, and they get food for lunch and uh, food for the weekend, and uh, and. Uh, Right now, they're putting together backpacks for school. So, you walk in and you say, I, my child's going to get enrolled in the in XYZ Florida school system. And uh, we understand you have school supplies that we can get. Yep. Where's your green card? I can't seem to find it. No worry, we'll print you a new one. We'll print you a new green card. And IQ is sitting, <laughs> on ass, sitting on his ass in England trying to get into the country illegally. And we got people that got into the country illegally say, I lost my green card. No problem. We'll get you a new one right now. How would they give it to him if he hasn't got the number? You've got to have a number. I'm just telling you, IQ. you got to have a number. Well, you got you, 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 you got to be like that the Elvis impersonators. you got to have a number. Every word you said, I know the corruption level. No. But you need a number. <laughs> Without this number, you can't get a green card. Okay, so I suppose they will find somebody who died in America, and they give him the number. Right. Now, here's the, here's the, now I think we talked about this earlier. De Blasio has said, effective immediately, you're going to have to have a vaccine, the federal vaccine card, in order to get into restaurants, bars, sporting activities, whatever, in New York City. So when I heard about this, uh, I said, mm, sound like an interesting black market opportunity. And I did a research. Oh, a research you better believe it. Sure, sure enough. You can get yourself a vaccine card in the black market, as many as you want. So now, so now we're going to have vaccine cards that are bogus, that are going to be used by people in New York City and other places. So what's going to have to happen, I think, is that Joe Biden is going to stay. There's too much fraud, and they're going to have to be registered 
federal. You're going to have to get a federal registration, which means everybody's going to have to go and turn over their personal information to the central government. That's coming. Okay. What do you think, Jim? Well, I would almost believe that if that, if that can happen, it will happen. Yeah. Yes, you're probably so. Jim, <laughs> let me, can I change the subject? Yes, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Did you watch any of the Olympics? No, I, I never watch any of the Olympics. I, 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 I can't understand. I, I, I don't care about the Olympics. Um, I was so happy the soccer team lost. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which soccer team were you were talking about, IQ? Exactly what you were going to talk about. The soccer team in America lost. Those woke bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, the yes. national anthem instead of concentrating on winning. They lost to Canada. They deserved it. Canada! Had any sympathy. So, did you, you must have watched the game? Yes, it was very interesting because it became political. So, you, did you, you watch any other events? Yes. Did you watch the, the most remarkable one? Section? No, the most remarkable one was between the Israelis and the Saudi uh, in like a judo or something. <laughs> and instead of the Saudi one going out in a glory, I suppose, Palestine, she fought, she lost, and they shook hands. This is sportsmanship. So did you watch more than the soccer game? Yes, yes, I watched quite a few of them. I watched the... I don't know the names of the people. I mean, because it's the first time I'm watching the Olympics, sports Olympics. But it was very interesting. Many of the people who acted badly against America, all of them lost. What a shame. No. They're woke. <laughs> no. They deserved it. <laughs> or woke. They I, I, it. I can honestly say I didn't see one minute. I did see the stories about the... Uh, um, the uh, gymnast who kind of withdrew and then came back in and got a bronze medal, and I don't know what that was all about. But, no, no, that she was right. Now, this is very important. She is a top gymnast of America. She said, I am literally worn out. And when these people do a triple jump or triple turn, if her mind and her body are not coordinated, she can fall and she can kill, kill herself. She is mm. absolutely right. She explained it. I understood it. She didn't do it because for glory or to, to prove a point. No, not at all. She said, I am not coordinated. I'm scared. She didn't do it. I agree with her. But then mm. she competed. I think she got either a bronze or a silver. Bronze. Yeah. Okay. But at there least she got something. What I could gather... IQ, there were a lot of athletes, uh, especially American athletes, uh, who did not support her position. Oh, quite a lot of them. I agree with you. Many Americans had no support for her also, especially uh, not leftists anyway, that's for sure. I mean, she is in sports, and she took it upon herself to become the leader of the LGBT community, Black Lives Matter. Who the hell are you? She <laughs> Who the hell are you? <laughs> she knows zero about these subjects. Zero. That's awesome. I heard her when she talked on the internet uh, with interviews. She knows zero about these subjects. But she became a spokesperson because she is uh, a leader in soccer. But she failed. Thank God she did. Thank no, God. I, look, look. I, I am extremely supportive of the American Constitution, like you are. Mm -hmm. I am completely in tune with Donald Trump. I take, I never apologize, ever, for telling the truth. Okay, that's not a bad idea. Stop yawning. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. 
stop yawning. No, I said, I said, stop yawning. He 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 reprimanded you for oh, for for a human function oh, there, that. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Dan, I should be yawning. I'm in the middle of the night. I don't know how you. I don't know how IQ. How you. How you have the. How you're able to do all these radio shows that you do, work a day job, do the thing where you go to the embassy and sleep. I'm just amazed sleep. by That's all that. Why I'm like Donald Trump. I swear to you. Unlike Donald Trump, he doesn't sleep much, by the way, Donald Trump. He is active. At his age, he's more active than a person who's 27, 26, 35, between 27 and 35 years old, honestly. I mean, Biden, compared to him, is a dead uh, a ghost. <laughs> oh, Biden, he's something else. Oh, the, Joe Biden. Is he going to make it to the midterms, or is he going to get taken out before then? I I I think what's going to happen is is he'll get to the midterms and there'll be this huge wave of of red support and Republicans and then he'll be pushed aside and they'll put uh, Kamala in there. But people don't like Kamala Harris, <laughs> so they actually worse than they they like Biden. Yeah, I I I, I look at that and I say, man. You know, Jim, we, we've all, in our lifetime, we have seen pictures of how young a president looked when he went into office on the first day. Yes, and how, yes. How old, he, how old he looked when he came out. Got to be a tough job, period. And I, I don't know that Joe has the strength to even make it to the first term. We'll see whether he makes it to 2022. Forget about 2024. <laughs> well, you are right about that. I think that if that, I don't know. I, I just think that that um, you, I'll give you since we only got a couple minutes. I'll give you yeah. a great a great conspiracy. So here's what's going to happen: Joe Biden is not going to make it. He'll make it to the midterms. After the midterms, he's going to say, "I'm going to hang it up. I'm going to turn it over to." Kamala. And before the new Congress comes in, the Democrats still have control of the House. Okay? Yeah. Guess who the new vice president's going to be? Wow. Sanders. Really? What? Saunders. No. That would be fantastic, but I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> No, who? Pelosi? Nancy. Yeah. Uh, Two years later, she's not going to run for vice president again, but she finishes holding two of the three highest offices in the land, vice president and speaker of the house. Wow. Don't ask me what I think. So. Okay. <laughs> Don't ask me what I think. Don't what I think. What I think. Oh. It. <laughs> okay. Yes, it's possible. Sure. In America today, whatever you say now, it's possible. Any insanity is possible. Any and insanity is possible. That's anything possible. to under, undermine the American Constitution yeah. is possible. I agree. Well, there is Jim, that. Always a pleasure being on your show. Yes. When I have tete a tete with Dan Turkey. <laughs> Well, Dan, before we let you go, uh, bring us up mm -hmm. to speed on some of your projects. Um, let's see. Um, last week on two shows of uh, Black and White, we had 804,000 listeners. Wow. We had a show today and a show yesterday that in two days brought in about 540,000 listeners and we have three more shows specials we're doing a special three-part special on the delta virus 
and we had a researcher on today. Tomorrow we have Dr. Malone, who created the RMNA uh, structure. And then on Friday, we have Scott Jenkins, an attorney who is going to talk to us about our rights to refuse the shots and or um, wearing a mask. So that'll be the trilogy. We're hoping that we'll have over a million listeners this week. On Thursday, we have another special show with the gentleman who is the founder of the California Teachers um, Educational System. It is not the union. This is teachers that have retired. And they're opposed to what's going on in the California schools, including critical race theory. So that was a great interview. We have him on Thursday. And um, we're looking at having uh, probably in the next couple of weeks, Roger Stone, and we're looking to try wow. and get Ben Carson and some really big names uh, on the show because we're having such a huge audience. We'll probably come in, uh, based on what we can see at the moment, Jim, we'll probably come in at 5 million viewers and listeners on for August. That's fantastic. It's unbelievable. I did an interview th th today with um, a gentleman you, you need to talk to. Um, Scott Hussing, who is a retired major from the Marine Corps, who just completed a 3,300 mile ride on his Harley. Yes, I have. I have attempted to book him on this show, talking with you and I. And when I got a hold of his his booker, they said, "Oh, Dan's already going to interview him," so they wouldn't book him on the show. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. That's cool. I don't have to talk to him. <laughs> it's good for, him to, for your audience. So I did I did part of the interview with him today. I've got to finish it up. And um, um, I'm going to have on American Cannabis Conversation. It won't be this week, but probably next week. I'm trying to get together an interview of a doctor who is answering the question that a lot of people are asking about cannabis, especially edibles. How much should I take? Uh, people get involved with these brownies and eat cookies and they just can't stop. And more yes. than anything else, they want to getting severe cases of diarrhea. Uh, um, and depending upon how concentrated they are, they can be stoned for a number of days. And, um, I am three quarters of the way through putting the final polish on Sad Eyes, which I hope will be out in the spring. It's a story about the nurse in the Second World War. And um, and occasionally I sleep. <laughs> well, uh, IQ, before we let you go, uh, bring us up to speed on your books and everything. Well, I don't know if, uh, if Dan is ever going to invite me to his black and white show. <laughs> I might. I might. He might. Oh, you see? There is always I'll hope. Talk to him. There's, there's always, always hope. hope. Of course there's always hope. Nothing is impossible with Dan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All you have to do is Google my name, Elvis Uli, A-L-R-A-S-S-O-L-I and find out more about Islam than you can possibly imagine. Yes. Well, uh, Thank you. A pleasure to have all of you together. I look forward to talking to you guys next week. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You. There they go. That is Dan Perkins, IQL Rizzoli. Ooh. And it's just, it is a day, my friends. It is a day. I just, I just don't know anymore. We'll see you next time.